That's better. Jeez. And hello, Katie. And hello, TMS. How's everybody? Happy Friday. Alright, so we're coming back with some Train Sim World 4 for the first time since launch day. Um, TNS. <laughs> I have to admit, I, I was resisting a very strong urge to yet again stream um, Starfield <laughs> today, <laughs> but I figured I'd better mix it up and try to try to keep it keep it honest. <laughs> I, I think maybe I'm starting to get a, maybe a teeny tiny bit hooked. So yeah. Just a teeny tiny bit, but we'll see. I mean, I'm only about nine hours into the game, so. Okay. Patrick, it's good to see you, man. How's your, how's your week going? And Patrick, have you been playing um, TSW4? Tina says I put quite a few hours in it, despite my criticisms of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I went into it with a, an open mind, knowing that I like Bethesda games in general, but, you know, knowing that there were going to be a lot of expectations for it, and, you know, it's a completely new I, IP for them. Um, but, you know, I try not to pre, <laughs> excuse me, I try not to prejudge it and just, you know, wait and see what we got. But so far, so good. You know, we'll see. So I, I, I'm pro that probably means I probably am going to play it on Saturday night again. And, um, you know, we'll, uh. We'll see how we make out as I get deeper into the game. But so far, I likes it. It's certainly not perfect, but still a lot of fun. Yeah. But I figure, uh, you know, I should get back to some of my other staples on other days. I don't want to stream, you know, Starfield every day, even though I feel like maybe I could because I, I want to do more. But um, somebody dropped into Starfield stream Wednesday, an old friend of the stream, and said uh, Starfield wasn't their thing, but um, they just wanted to say hi and they look forward to my extreme sim stream. So we'll see if uh, that person and others <laughs> like them show up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty. So welcome folks, I hope everybody had a good week. Um, Alright, so last time I streamed TSW4, um, I mainly went through just one of the new routes, uh, which is the Antelope Valley Line, the one set in Southern California, coming out of, uh, I think it's, uh, well, it comes out of Los Angeles, I think, to, yeah, Lancaster. And I didn't mean to, but we ended up pretty much doing the whole stream on this route. So that means I didn't really get to look at any of the new 
the other new routes that came with the game. And now all, the, all our DLC from the previous games is downloaded as well. So I've got the full menu of stuff, which I, I think when I streamed it on launch day, I, I was still missing a couple DLCs. And they were late coming down. But I think I think we're going to jump in on uh, this one, which is uh, Espan Vorlberg, which is the first Austrian route that they've ever done for Train Sim World. So I saw another friend of ours looking at it earlier this week, so I figured I'd give it a try myself finally. TNS says, I'm going to duck out shortly, spend time with the family, but be, but I'll be lurking. Okay, TNS, thanks for, for uh, uh, dropping in, man. I appreciate it. Uh, enjoy your evening with the fam. All right, so I'll take a look at that. And then the other new route we got was another UK route, which is this one. East Coast Mainline, Peterborough to Doncaster. Um, so I haven't done anything with any of those. Uh, we'll see if we can maybe get some time in on, on it tonight. Um, but we'll see. All right, so I guess we'll just start with the training. Um, it says Roots has Bond Vorlberg. Usually the training with the new, the new version of the game, now all the training takes place in the training center. But this looks like this is gonna be training on, on the line. see something okay um, the other thing for people who are fans of trains in world but may not know this um, TSW4 also came out with a, a pretty extensive manual um, which you can download from their Steam page or also I think it's available on Dovetail's own website so I, I kind of forgot about it until earlier today I saw another friend of ours Streaming Train Some World, uh, Captain Andy B, earlier this morning, my time earlier this morning, and uh, I mentioned to him that I didn't, um, um, that you know I had downloaded the manual. He said he didn't even know Train Some World had manuals, um, but I always look for manuals because. Uh, you know, I think a sim should have proper manuals, and Train Some World had, for a long time, had manuals with every... Well, they had it with the main game in the beginning, then they had it with every DLC, but I think they stopped making them a couple years ago. Stopped making manuals because they said their research told them that people really preferred other ways of learning. They weren't using the manuals, so I guess they figured they could save money by stopping the print manuals, but then they came out with uh, a new manual for this release, which I think is pretty terrific. So, um, so just FYI for the folks who are interested in that. Um, in fact, let me see if I can find my copy of it. I'm gonna keep, uh, keep it handy. Because this being a new route, um, um, a new Austrian route. Did I say Switzerland before? I think I think I meant Austria. If I didn't say that, um, I'm not sure. This train might have a new safety system. I think maybe it does that we didn't have before. So I might need to look at the references for that real quick as I'm as I'm going through it. But we'll see. So I'm just going to keep that handy. Uh, matter of fact, while we're looking at that, uh, while I'm looking at that, I'll just show you guys real quick. But yeah, there's this Train Some World manual. It is actually 125 pages, so this is a pretty beefy manual, in fact. Um, Got a good amount of information that I could see about the main, you know, new three routes and their games. 
the changes to the HUD. It talks about what you can do in the training center, and then the different trains that are found in the training center. Um, yeah, it looks like they did a pretty nice job. Here's the one I'm going to be trying right up front. Um, yeah, OBB, the OBB 4024. So that's a new locomotive, or in this case, I guess it's the EMU in the game. So yeah, a good amount of stuff in here, as you guys can see. So looks like a nice, uh, a nice manual. So I'm glad to see they they kind of changed their their mind about that and decided to start printing manuals again. I mean, I'm, at least for the main game, they printed this one. I don't know if we're gonna continue to see them for DLCs or they're gonna come back for DLCs because they had stopped making them for DLCs. All right, but in any case, let's jump into the train here. See what we can, what we can learn. Welcome to Bregenz Bahnhof, located in Vorarlberg, the westernmost state of Austria. The original station began construction in 1870, although this was demolished 30 years ago in 1989, before the station was rebuilt 500 meters west of the original location. Looks like the workers haven't finished placing the road maps. Let's... There are more route tasks to discover. Make sure to apply more route maps, fix snow height poles, and collect chocolate bars and Tyrolean hats. Oh, chocolate. <laughs> Your colleague, where's, David Meyer Where's the Silent Night like Wolf? She'd like to hear it out if she doesn't know it already. Oh, that's right. We, we get uh, contacts for our training now. Our training now. David Meyerhofer. Congratulations on completing your apprenticeship. It's going to be fun to work together again, even if I couldn't tempt you into the rock star lifestyle of construction. Yeah, no thanks, dude. Are you waiting for your ride? You'll be waiting a while as we're not due to finish work on this platform until next month. Okay. Yeah, hello, ADR! Thanks for the lurk. Welcome. Maybe you're supposed to be on platform three? Classic first day prank. Make it there, make it there quickly before he thinks it's funny, funnier to leave without you. Uh, this is what, 4A? That's the one right next door. Screw it, I'm just gonna cross the tracks. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? That's not gonna work because they want me to trigger the stupid waypoint. Never mind. That's what I get for being slick. I don't think I could complete the scenario if I don't trigger the waypoints that they give me. Take a seat. The train is just about to leave. The Vorarlberg Railway was first proposed by railway entrepreneur Karl Ganahl in 1847 when he recognized the necessity for a railway in the area. He would go on to pay for much of the preliminary work out of his own pocket. Construction began in 1870 and met many delays due to needing approval from all the neighboring states in the area. <laughs> Finally, in 1872, public services began between Bludenz and Lochau. Oh wow, this looks nice. Shortly after, in 1873, connections to the wider Austrian railway network were completed, and services between oh, Zurich in Switzerland and Munich in Germany would use this line. That looks pretty sweet. In 1954, 
electrification work on the line was completed. Although electric trains couldn't pass into the German rail network, this meant passengers in international services to Germany had to change to a diesel service in Lindau. Take the train to Austria, spanning cross-border the busy Vorarlberg S-Bahn line shuttles from quaint German island life to the foothills of the Austrian Alps. All new and bustling ÖBB traffic awaits in train zone world. ADR says, uh, hello, shouldn't you be in bed? Oh, you mean Katie? <laughs> yeah, don't you know Katie's, uh, Katie's a Major League Night Owl, ADR? Yeah, sometimes after my streams are over, she's still hanging online. Later than me, she puts me to bed. <laughs> uh, ADR says, looks like the end of Luzerne. Yeah. Yeah, nice scenery on the light, on the route, though. All right, so... They give us 150 points for that. We're doing basically nothing. Next training module. Okay, so that was the route introduction. They don't usually do the route introductions on the training center. Katie says only 1 a.m. Yeah. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive this UBB 4024 electric multiple unit. For this introduction, you will be driving the train a short distance and performing passenger operations. The UBB 4024, also known as the Talent, is manufactured by Bombardier and entered service in 2004. The name Talent is an acronym in German for Talbot Leichter Nahverkehrstriebwagen, meaning oh, Talbot Light Suburban Railcar. The ÖBB 4024 is a four-car unit with a top speed of 140 kilometers per hour. It's a nice looking train. All right, master switch to active. Now set Reverse the reverser to forward. This controls the direction of travel. Set the headlights to indicate that this train is operational. Insert the train brake handle. First, release the brakes applied by the train brake handle. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Um, left side platform. Eddie, are you? We're doing scenarios on this this week, right? The OBB 4024 is part of Bombardier's Talon series of multiple units, manufactured by Bombardier Talbot. I think it was. More than 300 Talon series have vehicles have been produced and have seen use in more than seven different countries. Close the doors before departure. To release the brakes and apply power, push the handle away from you.
knew something was wrong. Now you've built up some speed, you can return the master controller to the off position to begin coasting. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force by moving the master controller into the braking range. You're now approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force by moving the master controller into the braking range. <laughs> nice job. The train has safely come to a stop. You can now use the passenger door controls to open the doors. Somehow I opened both sets of doors. <sighs> Close the doors and drive to the next station unguided. That's not right, is it? Oh, look at that, that's weird. It's like one door open. Hang on. Huh. I don't know how I did that. Open one door. I forgot I had switched back to the standard HUD while I was trying to learn how to drive uh, one of the steam locomotives during the week. I couldn't drive that with the mini HUD. Didn't work out for me. See if I can figure out how this switch works. I mean, I could just use the hotkeys, but. Is that right? No, it's wrong. It's, it's the long side of the handle. Good work. 
That huh. concludes all of the basics for operating this train. That's a little wonky. All right, I might just use the hotkeys. See what else we can do on that route. So we did the training, which was really just the route introduction. And then... Let's, do a scenario. Let's see what the scenarios look like. Whiteout. Oh, this one has snowfall. I don't think I'm ready for a snowstorm. I'm just learning this train. Cross country tour. It's like in the movies. Oh, another one of those film festival type routes. They had one of those in the um, Antelope Valley line. Uh, what do they call it? The blockbuster scenario. Oh, it's a freight run here with the uh, BR-185. Okay. The rest of these are with the 4024. Okay. Let's try this one. Drive the special cultural tour cross-country while learning about the route. Welcome to Lindau. The regional cultural tour is in the area. Drive your service into Austria and learn about the area. Okay. Oh, I gotta talk to this guy again. Hello, David. I guess they put you on the tour shift, huh? Feel free to talk to the tour guides yourself. Just look out for the people in high visibility. In high vis, and there should be a couple of other workers around the station. What's your fact? Uh, well, here we go. Welcome to Lindau Insel, the border station between Germany and Austria. It was first constructed on the 1st of September, 1853, although the route to Blundes. Blue Dens wasn't electrified until the 14th of December. Cool. See you soon. Alright. You know what? That's the second time I've seen that uh, from the pole command. I'll have to check the settings on that. It, I'm starting to wonder, just looking at that now, do they want you to do math? You couldn't close it either? Oh, okay. Huh. No guard panels or anything. Oh, now it's, oh, it's closed automatically. That's weird.
I got marker lights on. Where's my headlights? Looks like this has PZB. Also, before I do that, let me change my HUD while I'm thinking about it. PZB is on the, pan the panel to the right below the headlights. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, down below. This way. Oh, okay. And see if I... Alright, got it. Thank you. This is my brake cylinder pressure. Main reservoir, I guess. Okay. Okay, so I think the duct needs a space. I will try it when it comes around again. Yeah, you know what? I never saw it do that with the number, and then a, like it looks like it wants you to to do a math problem, like eight twenty eight plus two, which obviously would be eight thirty, but. It's weird. I never saw it do that before. But you know, that's why it's bought software. They probably uh, they probably made some kind of change. So, all right, destination boards are already set. All right, let's roll. Desk light. I don't see any any light. All right, what else can I? Instrument lights. Yeah, I guess I can't tell the difference because it's broad daylight. Oh yes, oh, it wasn't on. That's why. All right. What is this? Wipers. Oh, it's got a cruise control on this one. All right, let's go. Forty-five limit. Yeah, you're right. Initial restriction. The start program. Better keep my eyes open. Thanks for a reminder. Still. Um, looks like a 50 zone. Guess we can pick it up a little. like uh, increased to 90 coming up. Where's my CIFA light? Yeah. Alright, 
person ID. It's in the block next to the speedometer, but you need it to use the brightener to see it better. Yeah, I turned up the gauges as much as I could. Um, I'll look for it when we stop. I see where the PZB indicators are, you know, 5570 and all that. But, yeah, you're right. It's kind of hard to see in the bright daylight. All right, increase to 100. There's another brightening switch under that one? Okay. Oh, here. I see it. Thanks. Two kilometers out. All right, we're in level grade. Speeding a little bit. The platform coming up, but I guess not our stop. There's that lake again. I'm losing speed. I'm actually going downhill. Do I need to reset the throttle? Still losing speed. What's going on? Yeah, I'm only doing 80. I can't get it to accelerate again. Hang on. Let's reverse. 
mushroom? Yeah. What did I do? That happened to you too? Is it a bug? Reset the panto? Okay. Well, we're coming up on our stop. Ah, I forgot an acknowledgement. Damn it! actually heard him start. You think it's a bug, no time limit, so you're fine. Okay, thanks. Alright, let's try that again. Um, I'm going to assume that I can go through the flashing red, but I'm going to check anyway. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Um, am I at restriction? I never did locate the, uh, see if I indicator. Oh, I've got the, uh, PZB helper on. Which I usually don't run with, but that's okay. It's helping me right now because I haven't located the indicators yet. Decent stop. Alright, let me try to switch again, because I... Alright, so it's the long handle end that I'm trying to point. Unlock right hand side doors. Alright, did I get it right that time? Yes. Alright, speak to the tour director. Okay. Assume he's outside somewhere. Welcome to Bregenz Bahnhof, located in Vorlberg, the westernmost state of Austria. Austria. The original station began construction in 1870, although this was demolished 30 years ago in 1989. The station was rebuilt 500 meters west of the original location. Yeah, we already got that from the original route intro. Talk to the other tour guides for more facts or get back into the loco to continue your journey. Is it the same facts we've already heard, though? Did you know there are three train stations in Bregenz? They are Bregenz... Bregenz Riedenberg and Bregenz Hafen, with Bregenz Riedenberg and Hafen only serving the more regional traffic. Nope, I guess we didn't know that. Any more? Original Vorlberg line, known as the Bludenz Lo Locale line had its first ceremonial run done by a steam locomotive, which had been given the name of Bregenz on the 30th of June, 1872. 
Huh. Okay. Is that it? I don't see any more hot spots, I guess that's so. Do I actually have people on my train? I mean, it's supposed to be a tour train, right? I don't see anybody, though. Oh, yeah. There's one guy. Hello, sir. Hope you're having a good time. Boy, he looks, uh... He looks like he tired a few on last night. All right. Uh, lock the doors. All right, so which way is the lock? Up or down? Some down, but let's see. Yes. All right, it looked locked. Stop at location Wolf Wolfert Platform One. All right, first of all, where are we on the line here? Oh, okay. So we we're heading southbound. Oh wow, got a long way to go. Alright. Let's see. Doors are closed. Do I have door buttons? Oh, it's just a switch. Never mind. What are these? Oh, the horns. Okay. Oh, before I pull off. Let me look at this a little closer, so... Oh, there's no uh, dash views built in. I can just zoom manually. Okay, so, yeah, there's a rocker switch for the brightness, like you were saying, Eddie R. But I guess that's just for this section. All right, so here's my sp speed, you know, limiting indicators, I guess, for uh, PZB. Oh, here's see if I see it. What is this? Malfunction state. Park and brake release. Park and brake apply. Okay. And then this was just a general instrument lighting. Dimmer. Okay, I already did those. Did I turn on the train lights? I didn't even notice. I assume they mean the coach lights. Doesn't look like it. Oh, it didn't work. Maybe it's just too bright during the day and I just can't tell. All right, let's go. Safe to release. All right, speed limit in this section is 110. Increased to 120 now. Alright, 0.6% uphill grade.
increase to 140. Woohoo! Alright, that's our top speed, according to the speedometer there. Alright, let's select downhill grade here. here. Yes, I saw that one. It's load 85. This is my stop coming up. How come I didn't see the indicator light? Like the normal 85 indicator light on on the dashboard. Or maybe I just can't see it because of the lighting. Alright, decent brakes. Matter of fact, I got probably overbraked a little bit. Unlock the doors, we're talking right side platform. Alright, pointing the long handle. There we go. No tour guides here? Yes, there are a couple. Okay. Welcome to Wolfert Station, adjacent to Wolfert Freight Center, one of the biggest freight yards in the Vorarlberg state. The station transports around 3.4 million tons of wagon load traffic annually, with the main transported goods being wood, paper, steel, and other building materials. Alright guys, so before we uh, continue the route, actually... I'm going to take a little break here, and I'll be back in a few minutes, folks. So thanks for hanging out. See you, see you in a bit. All right, folks. Um, looks like we're back from ads. I got mixed signals from the control panel there, so... All right, let's continue with the service. So, we got two more guys to talk to. Did you know every ton of freight transported by train emits 15 times less CO2 than truck? Okay. Did you know the Wolfert Freight Terminal is known as the container gate to the world due to its central location? Lock the 
Doors. Switch heads. Okay. Guess I should turn off PZB and CIFA while I'm here. I guess until lights. Should be set. Take my handle. Switch the train brake to hold. So no uh, no doors to go through from one end to the other. It's just got gangway connectors. That's cool. Master key to active. Brake handle. All right. So the brake handle goes in and out at hold. All right. I'll remember that. First or forward. Set our lights and safety systems. All right, so back to Lusta now. Our headlights and tail lights look good. And 45. <laughs> Thank you. ADR. Something else I want to do real quick before we pulled out. Um, well, I guess I should set my dash lights and stuff. I was thinking of something else. see the lights flashing. I assume they're flashing, but I can't see them. Oh, they're not all the way up. I have to hold it, and then they keep getting brighter. Oh, now I see them. Okay, I see it now. I thought it was just like a toggle, but now you have to hold it and let them increase. Okay, I see them now. All right, I got it. Let's release. Speed limit is 140. Yeah, I see the freight yard right now. Reduced to 85. If the handle moved faster, I could reduce fa- Ah, I hit the e-brick. Damn it! <sighs> Can I just 
override it now? Yes. Alright, good. Didn't make me do a full stop. Alright, safe to release. You did too? <laughs> you mean with the indi uh, the PZB lighting? Alright, I might as well keep it at 85 because I keep getting slowed down through here. Oh, it's reduction to 60. I wasn't looking at the, uh, whatever they call that thing up in the upper right. The root monitor. Root monitor or something like that? That caught you too, that 60? Yeah, that was just luck because I didn't see, uh, I'm still not used to looking at the root monitor. Oops, hasn't gone up yet. We had to reduce to 60 to go through the switch, I see. The crossover. Up to 130 here. I saw the sign there. Yeah. Okay. Keeping it under one thirty. Reduction to one ten coming up, I take it. Yeah, let me get it down now. Telling me 130 coming up. I don't understand when I look at that thing why some of the numbers are on the top and some of the numbers are on the bottom. I, I don't quite fully understand all the information there. And actually, that's why I downloaded. <coughs> excuse me, I downloaded the manual, the PDF manual, because I wanted to see if there was any more information. About the root monitor there, but I don't know. Uh, ADR says I think reductions are on the bottom and increases are on the top. Yeah, seems like that would make sense. All right, I guess I got acknowledgement here. Yeah, a right, reduction to 80, 80 coming up. Is my indicator flashing? Did a thousand hertz light come on? I can't quite tell. All right, another acknowledgement here. All right, 
That one says reduction to 80, officially. Yeah, now I can see the 85 flashing. I can't tell if that's a thousand hertz light or not. It's just a little, little ambiguous. In this light anyway. side platform. Alright, right, more tour directors. Man, I guess this tour is not very popular. I think there's literally literally only one person on the train well two now. Now that might be the same one person. Only one person on my train. Welcome to the border of Switzerland with the with only the Rhine River separating us. This is the closest, closest Austrian train station to the Swiss border and is where this tour ends. Ah, oh, this is the end, okay. ADR says, hi, I had nobody. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't complain then, huh? Okay, some more tour guides. Um, nice code, homie. Is it a London fog? Uh, did you know Lustenau it was first mentioned in 887? It later became an imperial free city until 1803 and eventually passed to Austria in 1814. Okay. Looks like one more there. Ah, got a route map. She looks like she might be a driver like me. No, it's just this tour guide. Uh, Lustenau is a custom station and is known to make embroidery and manufacture textiles as well as metal products, which makes it an, an important economic market to the surrounding rural region. Alright, I think that's it. Alright, so I mean, that's a little different. A little something different for, uh, for dovetail uh, scenarios. You know, I like to see him kind of doing different things now, like like with the uh, the blockbuster scenario they did for uh, California. Good job with the tourists. Turn off the cab and end your service. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the safety system. Oh, I didn't turn them on. Yes, I did. Of course, I did because I remember I remember using them. Um. I'm not sure what to do with the lights. I guess I'll have to turn them back to where they were when I found them. Tail lights. Train lights off. Now, is the train lights interior or exterior? I assume they were interior. They usually are in most of the... the German trains that have a switch on the dash here. The desk, rather. Alright, I'll turn that off. You want me to turn off the master controller? Turn off the reverser. Um, 
So turn off the master key before I take the brake handle out? Okay. So, nice work today. Hopefully, you and the passengers learned something new. Let's see how you did. Yeah. What I have one penalty breaking, and I didn't have any coming back this direction on this leg. So I guess I could have done better. Speeding, yeah. So I lost some points for speeding. Uh, total score 68.53. I got a platinum medal. Woo All right. So, no other negatives. Um, accuracy bonus, but I, I could have done better on my stops, too. I didn't really stop on target very well. Kept overshooting, so I have to, uh, have to get better at that. But it's only my first time driving this train, so... See if we can beat that score in the future. Uh, next scenario, go hard. Let me read the other scenarios first. I like that train. Though. It's, um, I think I like that better than the talent, too, to be honest. Um, the talent one. All right, what are those scenarios we got? White out. I don't want to do snow. International rescue. <laughs> Thunderbirds are go. Uh, pilot your train to help out with a stranded unit across the border. Across the border in the Switzerland? Does this route actually cross into Switzerland, or is it just within Austria proper? Um, let me see what else. Go hard. Downpours and flash floods mean that regular services have been canceled. Rails have been pulled in to help with evacuation efforts. Okay. Just like in the movies, a film festival is in town, and a special train providing a 4D experience for passengers is running to Blue Downs. What is 4D? What does that even mean? Um, yeah, I had a hard time with that uh, blockbuster scenario in uh, LA. I had to actually had to do it twice. Um, let's try International Rescue. Let me see what, what we're looking at here. Yeah, let's try it out. Welcome to Woolfort. A train is stuck in Lindau and the brains at dispatch are sending us to help. Four car, four car uh, formation. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So no prompt to close the door from outside. I can only step in. And it seems like they just close automatically. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, 
Master switch to active. First or forward. Brake handle in. Brake handle to drive. Uh, wait for access for the signal to clear. In the meantime, oh, we're already on headlights for a change. How about that? All right, I'm going to turn on my safety systems anyway. And let me get my lighting set up. You know, I don't see um, like the indicator that tells you if you're getting power, overhead power or not. Like you have that on a lot of the other trains, like German trains. But I don't see it on this one. Oh, maybe it's here. I just can't see it very well. Alright, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, let's see. Train lights. Instrument lights, dimmer up. Um, already turned on the headlights. Let's turn on the indicator brightness here. Alright, should be enough. Let's go. Least. Okay, says BRB, okay, Kenny. kilometers to our first stop. Alright, slight downhill grade here. Speed. I missed my reduction to one tenth. Uh, All
And hello, Aaron! Happy Friday, Aaron! Aaron says, been watching folks play Talos 2 demo. Oh, cool. So excited. Oh, okay. I didn't know there was a demo out. Uh, what'd I do? Miss my acknowledgement? I guess so. Oh well. Happy Friday. <laughs> Welcome back, Katie. I'll have to look for the demo now that I know there's one out. Did I miss an acknowledgement or did I miss Sifa? I mean, it's, I might have missed Sifa. Alright, I'm restricted to 85 right now. Aaron says, yep, because game releases November 2nd, but demo only for PC. So you don't get one on console? Ah, okay. Sorry to hear that. Oh, I see. We reduced to 80 because we have another transition. Another crossover here. I understand. So, is that river the bridge to... Is that the border they were talking about? The border to Switzerland? So, Aaron, what do you think so far based on what you saw? Knowledge here. Steep downhill grade, I gotta watch it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sound excited. Well, you said that when you came in, you were so excited. That's good. Yeah, I was I was saying the other night. Um, I think it was Wednesday night. I was actually streaming uh, some more Starfield on Wednesday, and I was talking about it with uh, KPR Games, if you remember him. And um, I was saying I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play Talos two yet or not. So it's a wait and see for me. Maybe I should watch some of those demos, or maybe I should try to demo now that I know there's a demo. Alright, reduction to 60 coming up. Because, you know, I finished Talos and the DLC, but... Um, I, think I, I think I did well on it, but, you know, let's be honest, they are hard. <laughs> try it, you know. Yeah, I, I need something else to make up my mind. I, I, I mean, I did well on the first game, and it's an excellent game. It's just, it's hard, and I don't know if I'm ready to... I think as I put it Wednesday, I don't know if I'm ready to push that rock back uphill again. So we'll see. I need more information. And I definitely need more information, so... Wait... It says stop is indicated. Where's my stop? Did 
Did I turn off my stop indicators by accident? Uh, let me just stop here. What am I doing? Hang on, what's going on here? Where's my stop? Uh, where am I? I missed something. Let me check. I, I don't think I turned off my stop indicator because I usually don't. Stop marker is on. Okay, they called it the track monitor. Um, Aaron says they took out the super hard things, apparently. Oh, really? Based on feedback from first game, but new game mechanics are dope. Okay. That's interesting. All right, hang on a second. So my stop marker says it's on. What about the... Uh... Oh no, the objective marker is what I was thinking of. The stop marker and that, both of them are on. So I don't, I don't know where I'm supposed to be. And it's even prettier. Oh, okay. That's hard to imagine. The first one was gorgeous. Um, is our friend ADR still hanging out? Because I'm confused. I don't know where I'm supposed to be right now. Wait a minute. I see a marker. Okay, I see it. Never mind. Um, oh, it's way up here. So... Am I heading in the right direction? Yes. Okay. Alright, just keep going then. Never mind. Sorry. Toot toot. Hello, Savoy! Welcome! Driving a new train on a new route, so a little confused, so just trying to learn. You're looking for this. <laughs> Happy Friday to you, too. How's it going? And also that if you're a sub, for those who sub. Alright, so I'm not... Am I in the restriction? Yes, I'm still under 85 restriction. Okay, never mind. I can go a little faster. Doing good, sense of all. Hope everyone is as well. Yeah! Saval, so, have you heard or, or seen, heard of or seen the Talos Principle? Our friend uh, Aaron, Aaron, Fitzgerald, Aaron Fitzgerald here in chat was just telling me about it. She, uh, she was saying that the demo is out and there's some people streaming it. to 100? Yes. Am I still restricted? I am not. Okay, good. And she's seriously trying to talk me into uh, playing it, it sounds like.
you're looking at it now. Yeah, I streamed it actually last summer. Um, I had actually owned it for a couple years before I finally played it, and I got around to playing it last summer um, on stream. And uh, fantastic game. It's just it's a sci-fi puzzler. Suval, it's just really hard. Okay, acknowledgement here. But I did beat it, and I beat the DLC, which is even harder. So, trying to decide if I feel like taking on such a challenge again. But, we'll see. Uh, is that miss my acknowledgement? That's some fresh mushrooms. I guess I did. Sorry, sorry. Blame chat, as always. <laughs> Kappa. Uh, kidding, kidding. All right, 45 restriction here. I can see the lights flashing now, thanks to ADR. Oh, we got a hard red coming up anyway, so I gotta stop. Oh, just went to green clear. Okay. Safe to release. Alright, back to 100. Uh, three kilometers out from our stop. Aaron says, at least play the demo to two. They're also selling the Towers Principle 1 and 2 together cheaper than the price of just buying two. Oh, wow. Uh, Saval says, what's that? Oh, level up. Uh, Saval says, that looks good. I can see it would be a challenge. Yeah, I mean, Saval, it's a fantastic game. Um... But it is very challenging. But I, I still recommend to people, if you like puzzlers in general, at least try it, I would say. Um, I got it on sale when I, first, um, when I first bought it. And I bought it as a recommendation after playing... Um, I'm drawing a blank again. I, I did the same thing the other night. Uh, it wasn't Portal, but I played after Portal, another sci-fi puzzler. And I'm trying... It's a really, really good game. In terms of difficulty, it's somewhere between Portal and the Talos Principle. And I just... For some reason, I'm just drawing a blank on it. I don't know why. It's a really good sci-fi puzzler, though. Uh, I'll look it up when, when I stop. But after I finished playing that game, somebody recommended to me the Talos Principle, and then I saw it on sale on Steam. Got a really nice uh, bundle on Steam with the game, all the DLC, and the soundtrack. So I, I, but it sat for like two years until I finally got to stream it. But yeah. But now Talos 2 is out, and I'm missing my speed limit transitions. me. Stop ahead. But yeah, beating that, that game definitely felt like an achievement. <laughs> and then Aaron played it earlier this year and beat it, and then played the DLC and beat that. Which it was funny when she started watching me playing it last year. She said, I'm not good at games like this. I don't think I'll ever play it. But she changed her mind and started playing it 
what was it, Aaron? You pick, you started playing it like last fall or last winter, I think. And then she finally finished beating it earlier this year. I'm going to say probably early spring or something like that. Wow. I didn't mean to do that. Yep, okay. Um, ADR says reset the pantograph when this happens. Okay. There we go. Aaron says I needed lots of help though, but I like streaming for help. Well, like you said, you had some good Shifus, but that being said, you did do a lot of that on your own, Aaron. All right, so couple up to the stranded unit and get back, get ready to head back. Couple up to the stranded unit. Contact the signal for access to the stuck unit. Oh, okay. So I need permission to go through the red light. Gotcha. Denied. Wait for signal to change. Okay. Hopefully I don't have to wait too long. Alright, here we go. Couple formation. Alright, so where am I going? Oh, I got I gotta go. Oh, I'm going forward, okay. All right, so just inside a kilometer to get there. Restriction. Coupling speed, let me not hit this thing too hard. Two toots for safety, but that's a totally American ha habit. Wait a bit, is this an automatic coupler or do I have to do this manually? I'm not sure how. Hang on a second. I'm not sure how German cons. I mean, this is not German, Austrian. Cons. I mean, coupling work. It's manual? Okay, so I have to get close and then get out and do it myself? Okay. Thanks, Udia. harder than I thought I was going to. Yeah. 
Sloppy. Uh, change in. Set the master controller to zero. All right, I gotta shut down this cab. Lights to off. Um, turn off my safety systems. Uh, take out the brake handle. Also, I guess I gotta turn my lights off. At least my lights. the other end of the train. Um... Hmm. So before I do that, do I have to get out and do the coupling thing, or is it going to prompt me to do that? I mean, this is a scenario, right? So normally they kind of feed you all the baby steps. I mean, both ends are blue. It looks like... Oh, it's done. Okay, I think it did it. Yeah. That's odd. I, I mean, it had kind of like the... The boot over the coupler on the other train. You would think... I would... There should have been a step that I should have got out and done that. But, alright. I guess I didn't have to. Fair enough. You know, I never did figure out that other question. Where I can see if I'm getting overhead power or not. I'm thinking it's probably on this display. It's just on this display. It's so dark I can't really see it. Can I turn that up? I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten levels of brightness. That's as bright as it'll go. It's probably those bars. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, I can't read German, so... But yeah, it probably is these. Okay. Actually, this is my brake cylinder indicator here. Do any of these work? Auto brightness? Oh, auto brightness. That, okay, sets it automatically for me. Let me just use that. Uh, now, I noticed the destination boards get set automatically so far in the, the scenarios I've been using. But I'm betting there's a manual programming here. I'll play with it some more off stream. Oh, actually, no, this is the destination board control panel. Usually. At least it is on the German trains, but it's not functional. No. Does any of this work? No. Okay. Aaron says choo choo. <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry, ADR, you said there's a couple selector on the master key too, but I guess they skipped it. Oh, you're right, it is. I've seen it. Just trying to see what else, you know, what the other settings were on here. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Alright, let's get moving. Well, I could turn my instrumentation light up just so I can see this thing. Because I really can't run the safety systems without this. Alright, there we go. Um, headlights are up. Destination board is not programmed. But I guess this is not like a passenger service. This is some type of utility service. Alright, let's go. Alright, 45 restriction to here. But I can override. Or release, rather. Alright. Still, 50 limit in this section. I've got a 100 increase ahead. Stop is at Wolfert, Wolfert Yard, 11 kilometers away. All right, so we've got a ways to go. Increase to 100 coming up, looks like. Oh, oh yes, there it is. Took a while for my tail to get past. I was, that's right, my train's longer now. I added another, uh, another uh, set to the back. added another four cars it looks like all right ladies and gents we're going to take a quick break before we continue on the service and i'll see you guys in a few folks. And uh, Liquid Warden, good to see you. Welcome to you. Thank you, Katie. Toot toot. Savar, are you back? See, is, I saw he chatted a little bit up there during break. How you doing, Liquid Warden? You are. Uh, so, Val, the only re uh, the other thing I meant to tell you when I was asking you about the Talos Principle is our friend Aaron there, Fitzgerald, is actually the voice one of the voice actors actors on the game. If you don't know her, she uh, she plays one of the only two speaking parts in the game so uh yeah she she adopted our, our our little stream as a friend last year when i was playing it and uh yeah <laughs> and you know what it turned out 
when we were playing this last year, a lot of people knew Erin because if you look at her, her credits, she does a lot of, uh, oh, and IMDb, rather. She does a lot of uh, voice work for um, video games, uh, you know, animated features. I mean, she has had an extensive career. I bet if you if you look her up on IMDb, so of all, you will probably know lots of things she's done. So uh, yeah, that that's who Aaron Fitzgerald is. It's been a slow year this year, though. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll pick up for you, though, Aaron. I mean, it's it's this is a strike year, right? You guys are are you on strike too? You're in the in the, um, are you in the, in, the, in the same union, Aaron? Because the writers are on strike, the uh, screen actors, I guess, are on strike. Other than Talos 2, okay. Oh, so Talos 2, that was that work was this year? Okay, see I, I didn't I didn't know what the uh, what the cycle was on it. It yes, one camera and some areas of voice voiceover and VG about to strike. Oh, okay. Talos was this year. Oh, okay. See I I didn't even know that. Um, actually, Aaron says I'm focusing on a theater show instead. Oh, okay. Thank you for your all, all your kind words. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for I me mean, because you've given something to, you know. How do I want to put it? You have given something to a lot of people in terms of things they care about, in terms of uh, you know IP and projects and productions and things like that. I, th I think some, you know, people in in this kind of community know something. Almost everybody will know something you've done. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I appreciate you too. Yeah, I guess it's been a crazy year as far as, uh, why am I, I'm having that problem again, accelerating. Hang on one second, let me fix my train. Let's see if I can get power now. There we go. That is a weird thing. I, I think ADR is right. I think that's a bug, because I didn't do anything. And I just lost power. So crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy year in, in the entertainment industry at large. Just, But you know what? I hope everybody who's on strike, I hope they get every damn dollar they deserve. Seem, and suits seem just greedy to me. They seem crazy greedy, you know? Pay the folks, you know. Come on, share the share the wealth, but they don't know how to share wealth the wealth in America anymore. Oh, uh, why? What did I do? Why? What did I do? I certainly didn't miss my Sifa. Yes, I don't think I did. But I think I can reset on the fly now. Yeah. Um, Aaron says, but excited to hopefully usher in beneficial changes in the industry. Yeah, we need it. Otherwise, we kind of, I mean, we as entertainment consumers lose everything we care about. And, you know, you guys who actually work in the industry, you know, your livelihoods are at stake. I mean, there's no choice. They've got to, I mean, you guys got to fight for what you, what you deserve. Let's be honest about it. All right, speed limit is 140 in this section. Let's pick it up, put them down.
Aaron says, praying for residuals. It's the lack of residuals killing artists. Exactly. Yeah, I understand that. Alright, I'm doing a crap job of spotting my Cepha light before it goes off. Let me try to do a better job with that. I'm sorry, folks. Alright, wait, we got a reduction coming up. Try not to trip the emergency brake, because that's something I keep doing here. Alright, a reduction ahead is, is actually going to be 50. Excuse me, 40. See, I still don't understand the root monitor thing. It says 50 on the bottom and 40 on the top. I, I don't understand. Suval says, I hope everyone gets what they deserve. Yeah. All right, my restriction's actually 85 here, but limit is 50 coming up, then 40? Well, stop's coming up, so yeah, I guess so. Stopping at the yard. Park the car in the yard. Alright, good stop. Fab job today. Let's see how you did. Fab job, he said. I could have done better, though. Um, Aaron said, yeah, just trying to make living wages, right? All right, got an achievement there. Crossing borders. Complete international scenario, and I couldn't read the rest of it. Um, that sustained when we were out of production. We, can't, we can go years between seasons, right? All right, let's see what we did here. So, more or less good on... The speed limit, I only broke it kind of here and here a little bit. Uh, not too bad on speed. Uh, got a, got another platinum medal, so good, good. Uh, look at the score, 4,000, like right on the nose. <laughs> not that the number specifically means anything, but, you know, us humans seem to like nice round numbers for some reason. Um... I didn't get a root analysis, though, but I guess you only get that on, like, Passenger services or something? I mean, I guess this is more like a... I don't want to say a freight run. What do they call that when you uh, you just move trains or locomotives? Uh, 
There's a certain name for that type of operation. I'm sorry, I can't remember what it is. But I guess it's more of that then. So I guess you don't get the full breakdown, but... That's all right. Nice round number and a platinum medal. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Next scenario. Um, I like to read what it is. I don't want to just click it. I'm sorry, bro. All right, so that was International Rescue. Okay. Oh, you know what? That was the threshold for the the platinum medal. 4,000 right on the number. It was nothing I did. I guess it's just the way it was, uh, the scenario was scored. Okay. As opposed to the previous one. Threshold was 4,000. I got 68.53. Okay. Um, you know what, why don't we try something else, like a, just a regular timetable service. Oh, we can run the, um, uh, that Swiss train that we got last year, um, I mean, it, the, the um, RAB 523. I can't think of the, the route that it comes from. Um, hold on a second. Let me look real quick. Luzerne Circe, this one. So I guess they have a layer for Luzerne, uh, the, the train from Luzerne Circe on this uh, new Austrian route, I guess. That's cool. Now that train has a, a pretty funky safety system on it. I, I never really did fully get the hang of it. I mean, I kind of did okay the few times I drove it, but I think I just didn't drive it enough to really, really learn it really well. Um, and I think I expected something like that to be on, on the new train, but it pretty much is runs PZB and CIFA just like most German trains, so. All right, let's see what we can find. Something else to do. Um, see if we can find something that's not too long. Uh, it's a big variety of uh, service lengths here. It's like 12, 19 minutes in this range, all the way up to, an, you know, an hour, hour 10, hour 11 minutes, roughly. Um, you know what? Can we try something in the evening? Sort of. Let's try to serve 1945 
hours or you know 7 45 p.m service from Bergens to saint margrethen 14 minutes passenger run um, so i don't know how dark it's going to be then i guess we'll see um, but i'd like to see if my my instrumentation in cab looks any different kind of later in the night but I, I'm hoping it's not like so dark that I can't see squat like a lot of routes, especially German routes. All right, so we'll set dynamic weather, light clouds, starting at Brigens, terminating at Lustenau. All right, let's try it up. All right, four car consist or formation starting 1945 hours. All right, uh, right side platform. All right, so let the nice people on the train first. Tell if I have uh, power or not. I guess I'll run the panograph anyway. But you know what? Before I let them on, do I? Oh, look at them. Man, this train's crowded. I wanted to see if the lights were already on because I couldn't tell in the daytime if they were on or not. Let me just play with it. I'm just curious. Well, first of all, let's turn this on. Desk lights. NASA. Okay. Is this, if I turn that off, is that their lights? Is that what that means? Yes, okay. So that is that switch. I just wasn't sure. And hello, Scott. Welcome. All right, so that's the train lights d does mean their lighting. Okay. So let's get the instrument lights on. How are you doing, Scott? Uh, turn those all the way up. Headlights, safety systems. Let's open the doors. What did I say? Right side platform? Yeah. Wow, why is the platform so dark over here? I mean, the rest of the platform's nicely lit. What's up with this section, though? All right, well, that's not cool. Um, actually, let me turn on my PZB indicators, or turn them up anyway. So I can see I'm good. All right, lock the doors. for up. Uh, let's go. All right. Initial restriction 45. I got to turn that that off. I forgot the uh, well that the um, PZB assistance uh, part of the hood.
boy, it's dark. Is that my bright, the brightest my headlights are? I guess so. Oh, it let me release. I thought it said it wasn't safe to. Alright, well. Maybe it, the indication was wrong. How's it going, Scott? You, uh, flying tonight? Flying while lurking? Oh wait, we got a stop coming up. I was about to open it up to, to 120, but I wouldn't have that far to go. Oh, now I can see the Cepha light. It's really dim. I couldn't see it at all in the daylight, but now I see it. here. Uh, I'm about 30 seconds late. Not doing too bad. I see my thousand hertz light too now, but it's not flashing, so is it... Does it have to be flashing to be active? Aaron says, I'm going to head out. Have a great night. Thanks for hanging out, Aaron. And uh, thanks for the heads up about um, the uh, Talos uh, 2 demo. I I'm definitely going to look for that. Enjoy your night. Have a good weekend if I don't see you. Ah, stop shirt. Sure. Oh, well. And actually, even though she hasn't been streaming on Twitch for a while, I'm going to give our friend Erin a shout-out because she is a boss. Um, she has not been streaming on Twitch for the last several months she has been streaming on TikTok, for those who have a TikTok account. Um, but I think she might come back to Twitch um, when Talos comes out. But we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Either way, worth a follow. Night all. I will stream on tr Twitch again, but okay. Good to hear. Good night, Aaron. So we are still restricted 20, excuse me, 45 coming off the platform. Uh, did I miss my acknowledgement? I guess I did. Sorry. I know it wasn't restricted to 45. I don't have the I don't have the 500 hertz magnet light on. I mean 25. I, I know I could go to 45. I must have missed an acknowledgement coming off the platform, maybe. Oh well, I don't know. All right, but we got dead red ahead. I can't go much further. ADR says are the lights on? Yeah. You mean the outside lights? Yep. Yeah, they're on, they're on full. I'm 
But, you know, it's like a lot of German lines, especially. You can, okay, okay, I just got clear there. You can't see uh, on, at, on their routes at night. That's dumb, yeah. Nope, can't release yet. But that signal tells me we're going to be reduced to 80 ahead. But I can't go past 45 anyway. Can I release yet? Nope, not yet. Uh, next stop is 2.7 kilometers out. Why am I still being held? Safe to release, okay. Eight, 80 limit ahead. Yeah, now I can see the CIFA light, but I couldn't see it at all in the daytime. It's, it is really dim, though. I mean, did I miss another panel dimmer? I mean, I know I did the one here. It's at 100%, though. But no, that doesn't control this, this section. See, now I can at least see the see for light, even though it's really dumb. Maybe uh, spare people <laughs> the buzzer. Wait, I thought my reduction was to 80, but now it's clear again. Click out. Almost a minute late now. Yeah, but oh, I can't see it from here, but let me turn the uh, cabin lights on here. Yeah. But yeah, you can you see here, ADR, it's um, headlights full up, so it doesn't go any bright, brighter. So it's off, tail lights, headlights both ends. That's all I get. Although you know what, on some trains, on some German trains anyway, there's a there's a high beam. I wonder. I wonder if I can. I wonder if there's one here, and I just don't know it. Sometimes you get like a little blue button on the desk that has the high beam.
That's our lights, that's all we get. Luckily, this is a short service. I don't think I want to drive this for like an hour, an hour and a half. It's just too dark for my taste. Six percent uphill grade, getting steep. Let's get us some more power. Uh, oh, there's my uh, induction eighty five indicator. three clicks into the platform. Knowledge here. Wait, what is that I just saw next to the CIFA light that was lit for a little bit? I don't know, whatever that light is, I saw it lit up for a second. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's, it comes on when I apply braking force. Yeah, it's showing me that... Actually, I'm not sure exactly, because I can't read German. Sperry Traction. Re reverse Traction, maybe? I'm not sure. minute and a half late now so yeah I'm getting getting worse on on time performance I'll get better yeah overshooting from the platforms anyway. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> there we go. They worked it out. Thought they were about to have a break dance battle or something. Done. Is this my last stop? I think it is. Yes, it is. All right. All right. Lock the doors. Platinum, 39.74. All right, a little bit of speeding here. Other than that, I was way below the speed limit. I could have done better. No uh, negatives on the breakdown, so... I'm sure I can score better than that. I was late. I was... Uh, yeah, I was about a minute late at the end. And 12 meter stop accuracy, yeah, and that's a little sloppy at the end there also, so yeah, I could do better. Um, you know what, let's shut down the cab and we'll get out and walk around a little bit, because I haven't actually looked at any of the stations yet. Alright. Uh... 
Um, safety systems off. No. Did I? I didn't turn a reverser off, did I? I did not. Get out of here before the AI before the AI takes over. Yeah, it's a nice train. I like it. Something is weird that I I can't close the doors from either. You know, I started to say from the outside, but I can't close the doors from either inside or outside once I've opened them. Like I said, before the AI takes over. Uh, so, PIS working? That's uh, not very high res, though, is it? Well, looks like it's functional. I don't know if it's accurate. Do I still have a flashlight? I do. I forgot what they said the uh, collectibles were here other than the route map. Well, I remember chocolate. I do remember chocolate, now that I think about it. But I don't see, I, don't, I have no idea what the chocolate would look like. And I don't remember the other, other two types. All right, let's see what's downstairs. Ah, oh, we can't go downstairs. What's that? Oh, there it is. Chocolate bars eaten. Okay. So it looks like a... Just a... Uh, like a parcel. Okay. Alright, well we can't go downstairs. So I guess there's nothing else to collect here. I didn't do any photos. I didn't use photo mode at all during uh, services. I forgot. All right, so that's going to be it for me, uh, for me folks. I uh, hope everybody else has a, uh, a great night. Um, enjoy uh, your weekend ahead. Hopefully I will see um, you guys on Saturday.